like 10 50 i'm headed to a natural hair expo um this is what i have on just this like faux leather skirt um a boss lady virtual shirt and this like come on thing um i wanted to get there at 10 but of course i did i wanted to actually get up at six drive uber for a little while and then um and then come back home by nine get ready and head down there by 10 but that didn't happen because my body no longer has the discipline of waking up to an alarm um so yeah i'll see y'all when i get there i'm about to pull off peace out okay so i just got downtown and i just parked in this parking garage because me and my mom and my dad came down here um yesterday to this restaurant and we got like a parking validation but we were in the wrong garage so we couldn't use it and it doesn't expire till december so i used it um so yeah i'm here let me get out i do not like parking garages like this but we in and out baby we in and out so i'll see y'all once i get out. i'm parked a bit of a ways away from the place but at least i have my sandals that's actually why i wore sandals because I know the parking garage was some blocks away from the actual place. But free is best for me, so it's cool with me. And then we're going to use the product to hold those curls in place. So you see how that changed? So I'm taking the curl forming tester. It's really light. It doesn't have a super hard crunch. And we're going through and applying the product from root to tip. to a body oil, a scrub, a body spray, 
and we now have body silks. So stop by our, our table and get you some good smelling products. Yay! <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Erica Pope and I'm the Global Brand and Product Development Manager for On Jackets. We have a bright and cool booth over there, right in the front. Let's check us out. Hi everyone, I'm Shelby Tinsley, creator and founder of iShelby Daily Affirmation App. And then 
it's sunscreen season, right? So I go into March mentally thinking like, okay, Shantae, it's on, turn on. I have a voice in my head that says, Shantae, keep going. Shantae, keep going. Shantae, keep going. Does anybody know what vertigo is? I'm and so over the season, I had two vertigo attacks, right? And that wasn't because I couldn't handle what was going on, but my body was like, okay, you need to chill. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm gonna keep going, and that's what I did, right? But for me, until we get those resources and we have a solid foundation, then maybe I'll start to be able to get back to my normal routine of hiking and being the true woman of the sun that I am, and that's why I created Black Girl Century. But I can't tell you that I have this routine or this time that I take to myself, because literally as soon as I wake up, it's black girl sunscreen throughout the entire day. And I've had those days where I'm laid out in my office crying because something didn't go right. However, I do have a mantra, and that's never get too high and never get too low. Because at the end of the day, it is just business. So keep composure throughout. And that's what it is for Black Girls in Okay, and I can appreciate that uh, honest answer. It's not always a quick, you know, easy answer. And you're right, entrepreneurship will make you want to pull out your eyelashes. It will. It will make you be like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And so it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Listen to that reference, right? Pull out your eyelashes. If anybody here that wears lashes and you pull them shits out, they hurt. Right, so it hurts, yeah, it, it, it is. So we've got about five minutes left. I think that you have to decide if this is something that you want to pursue and you're ready to take that leap of faith, that you need to downsize, create your life to make it affordable for what you want to do. So when I started my consulting company, I decided to walk away from a, a really good paying job. But what I had did was is that I saved two years, I saved money. And um, two years prior to that, I had made a decision at that time. I said, I'm going to continue to live as if I'm not making any more money than I did the years before. So I didn't go out and buy no expensive bags, a bigger car, a bigger house. I didn't move into, I, I live in Atlanta, so I didn't move into Buckhead where all my friends were living. Um, so, and I've been, my mom, you know, I really appreciate her because she taught me this at a young age. But I remember in college thinking this, all my friends were going to see spring break. And I'm like, how are they affording to go to spring break? And I'm the only one working. None of them had jobs. I had a job. So how can they afford it? But I realized that how you prioritize your money is how you're going to live the rest of your life. So I hate when people say, I can't afford this, I can't afford to that. You have to decide what's important to you and you have to prioritize your budget. I was gonna leave that question, this question alone, but um, with that being said, don't be so quick to quit your job because other people are saying, oh, I quit my, because it's like a trend on social media, like, oh, I quit my job to be an entrepreneur full time, but you're only off, you're only seeing what they're putting on social media. You don't see that they're really struggling living in their mama basement. So for myself, I mean, I was at that moment in the earlier part of this year, but I had to teach myself balance. It says in order for me to find I shall be, I need to stay working. And you, and again, you don't have to, do, go at your own pace. Don't go at anybody else's pace. And everything that's going to work out for you will work out. You just have to learn to like live, live love yourself more because I wasn't the Shelby that you see today on the stage. Last year, I was like all over the place. I was crying because I was working full time and I also had I Shall Be and I thought that I needed to quit my job. But no, I just needed to do what Erica said, prioritize. And then everything will work out and flow perfectly. So I guess my message to you is don't necessarily be so quick to think that you have to quit your job for your entrepreneurship. You, what, you, what you may have to do is work your nine to five, you have a break at six o'clock, and then that's it. work from 7 until 11, and then, you know, get you a good three, four hours of sleep, and then start over again. You may have to sacrifice a few things, but it's going to be worth it in the end. And really quick, I know we're out of time almost, but um, I quit my job, and I don't even think I told my husband. I went on a, a stress leave because my job was making me sick. Okay? Heart palpitations, management.
went on 20, and I didn't have time for hair falling out, no. Um, and I didn't have a savings, and uh, social life, I don't I still don't think it's, it was not popping, in my opinion, but it was, it was consistent. And so I just took a leap of faith. God told me it was time to go. There were certain things that weren't lining up at the job that I just could not stay. Maybe you can get another job to fund. But if, you're, if, if that job is making you sick, you have to seriously think about it. And it's not about just quitting just to say you're a full-time entrepreneur. This thing right here is something different. And as soon as you quit, everything will start happening. My husband got into an accident and ruined the car. We had to buy a whole new car. We had to, like everything started to happen, but luckily we were resilient and we just kept going because that's a part of our journey. So you just gotta kind of listen to your star player, I would say, and, and, and see what God is needing you because even if you do quit and you are a full time entrepreneur, at least you took the leap of faith, but you just have to make sure you can maintain that. Just want to say one more thing think of your nine to five as your investor. That's how I think about people who want to quit nine to fives and don't really have funds going into their new business. Think of that nine to five as your investor.
little bit about my journey. So I grew up in Detroit, and what I love about being from Detroit is the fact that the people of Detroit are in, they're self-sufficient, they're resilient, they are strong, they are willful, and they are determined. All you have to do is look outside to know that. Look at what this city used to be. I grew up in a neighborhood where on Devil's Night, half the buildings were on fire, half the homes in my on my block were on fire because the city wouldn't tear them down. I grew up in a neighborhood where my uncles had to run home from school because they were being robbed every day. They were being beat up every day. They were being tortured and bullied every day. I grew up in a neighborhood where we didn't have a whole lot. I didn't have a whole lot. I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. We had to make ends do. My grandmother raised me. God bless her soul. She passed away a few, a few years ago. And my mother and father were very young when they had me. They were 15, 16 years old, so they were kids themselves. So in that day, your grandparents stepped up or you were left to whoever would take care of you at the time. Some, for me, I was fortunate enough to have a beautiful grandmother to raise me. But my parents were not the most exemplary parents because they were children. And, and, and that's their journey, and I'm okay with that. My father wanted me, but my mother didn't. She decided that she didn't want to have a child at 16 years old. And for me, it, it basically meant that whatever issues that my mother was going through, she was not the kindest person in the world. In fact, many times I have tried to have a relationship with her. She did not want a relationship with me. She felt like once she had a child, that was it. She was gonna move on with her life and basically pretend it never happened. So she pretended like I never existed. That my whole life was non-existent to her. I was invisible to her. This is a woman that, once I got of a certain age, after three years old, my dad wanted to reintroduce me into her family, my mom's side of the family. And she would take me, I mean, I'm sorry, my father would take me to my grandmother's house, my mom's mother. And sometimes my mother would be there. My mother would never speak to me, she would never look at me, she would never make eye contact with me, she would never acknowledge that I was even in the room. Now, I was a child. I was a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 15-year-old, wanting my mother just to acknowledge me that I was actually, that I was alive. Not only that I was worthy of her love, but just simply like, see me and I remember there were times where my mother would be so angry that I was in her so to hear someone that's doing that of your stature and what you've done that's amazing we wanted to present the spirit of Detroit award award um, on behalf of Detroit hair natural Detroit natural hair expo and city got done speaking that's who the previous clips were of um if you guys don't know she's a detroit native so she came here to speak at the natural hair convention um there's another demonstration that i don't really care to see so i'm gonna go get something to eat and come back because i'm hungry as hell it's like two something three o'clock it's over at five um I might stay till like four based off of the itinerary and what I want to see. But I'm about to get some meat because I'm so hungry. Go places 
just by myself. I feel like why well, wait on anybody? You can just go home. So that's what I do all the time and I'm enjoying myself. I should give me a little drink too. But I thoroughly enjoy being by myself. And I love coming to events like this. It's very motivating. I like to come to whatever events I can, especially here in Detroit since I've graduated. Um, a lot of events I miss because I find out about them after they've already happened. But once that happens, I just feel like, oh, you gotta be better with, you know, following the right people so you can know about the right things. I found out about this because one of my followers, a girl I know, she posted about it. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know we had a natural hair expo in Detroit. And I went, and I Googled, found where I could buy tickets. There was tickets available. And I bought one. And now I see it. I was just here the other day, not this restaurant, but this building for my mom's birthday. This girl I follow on Instagram posted, I know her, she posted these chicken wings that looked delicious. And she said this was from, so I'm here. Closed. I hope they got food trucks over there that got something I like to eat. Do I have to walk all the way down there to cross the street? I would have been better the hell off getting a croissant from Starbucks and calling it a day. That food was horrible. It's really a shame how gentrified Detroit has become. Like, actually, truly, it's a shame. I'm ready. It's a little dark, isn't it? It just has a lot of light in there. Yep. Um, when they have burning uh, lines. So we have Sierra coming down, styling. Questions today, so please feel free to ask questions. I'm still just interacting. 